Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be fixing up this Jeep Grand Cherokee which has a problem with the swirl flap motor. So unfortunately it has gone into limp mode. You can see their engine management light is on and also we have a flashing little light there. And although the car is still running, it's got no power to it. It's uh, when you, It doesn't kick down when you put your foot down, so you can still drive it around the place, but it's not operating as it should. Now, to change the swirl flap motor is a, a bit of a big job, and unfortunately it would be uneconomical to get a garage to do it on the age of this car. So this is a 2008 model, but there is a workaround that you can do with a resistor which fools the car into thinking the swirl flap motor is still working and that's what we're going to be doing. So obviously the best job would be to replace the motor and have the car functioning properly but by using the resistor it will bring the car out of limp mode and at least then hopefully it will be able to stay on the road for many more years to come. So this is my brother's car, he's uh, going to just drive it now and we're just going to do a kick down, I can show you him putting his foot on the accelerator and you can see that the car won't kick down. So let's start driving now. So I believe it's, it's limited, I think it's to 3,000 revs where it stops. That's correct. Right, so we're going to be kicking down now. So you can see there, kicking down, <laughs> and it hasn't changed gear. It's a three litre V6 and it's just lacking power. So uh, let's get under the bonnet, and also as well, when we plugged in the diagnostic tester into it, it was coming up with a swirl flat motor. Now we're in the UK, so this is a UK right-hand drive car. Here's the flap to release the bonnet. And now, let's get in there. And here is the beast itself. Now this is a very common engine. My brother's gonna let you know what engine it is. It's the Mercedes-Benz OM642 engine. It's the three litre 24 valve V6 diesel engine, Commorel direct injection, commonly known as a three litre CRD. It's found in a range of Jeep, diesel Jeep models, Grand Cherokee, the Commander, but more commonly you'll see it in Mercedes models, all the way from the C-Class to the S-Class, which has the diesel engines. Rough years, we're talking about 2005 to 2010. A lot of people just stick a resistor in, but I'm just gonna show you what my brother's bought, which is possibly the world's most expensive resistor. So here we have it, the emulator it's called. Now, believe it or not, this was 50 UK pounds, so you can probably save yourself 49 pound by just getting even a high watt resistor but if you have a look it's using the middle two pins it's hard to see but there's two little pins in the middle there and if we put the meter to ohms it's coming up as 4700 ohms 4690 ohms so it's 4700 ohm resistor let's get this installed to begin with just undo these two bolts here using a 10 millimeter socket you just need to lift it up and slide it out from the back now straight away I can see the problem here, you can see that this is the turbo and you can see we have oil stain in here so obviously this little orange gasket here is leaking. Also it's possible that this is leaking here as well because we have oil splattered up here. Now annoyingly we haven't got spare gaskets so we're not going to be changing them in this video but if you're watching this and thinking about doing a job you might as well get the gaskets before doing the job and you can change them at the same time. I think they're between 20 and 30 UK pounds. So we want to remove this here so we're going to be undoing this Jubilee clip here and we're going to be undoing this Jubilee clip here and also this bolt down here as well. So this is seven millimeter seven millimeter and this one here is ten millimeter so to begin with we're going to pull out this pipe that way and this comes out nice and easy just like so that was the other gasket that needs changing now we've already loosened this up so this will now slide out like this from the turbo and now if you have a look down here we've loosened this one so we can simply pull that out like that and now we've removed this pipe out of the way. So this is the gasket here which can fail. Now like I said we haven't got a replacement so we're going to be taking this one out and we're just going to be giving it a good clean up. So now this is the plug that we need to remove so you can see the cable feeding it here. We need to take that one out. Now interestingly look at this it looks like there's a stone here but it's not. That is a hardened bit of oil. Look at that. Rock hard. This is the connection we need to take off and it's quite fiddly. So to practice, I'm just gonna show you it on this one here because they look to be the same connector. So what we have to do is we have to get a little flathead screwdriver and we have to put it underneath here and just lift that tab up. Now with that tab, you need to then push it back 
towards the body. So pushing it in this way towards the body of the connector. So this little grayish white tab, I'm going in that way. And now look, if I go in that way, it then allows me to take it off. And you can see that this is the little clip here, this little bit here, and that clips in to this bit in here. So look, clip it into place, push down, job done. Let's do the same down here. It's gonna be slightly harder to get to, but hopefully it should be okay. It's gonna be hard to fill, but I've got the screwdriver in, and I'm lifting that up there. You can see that that's come up there. And now I'm gonna push that that way and lift up at the same time. I've got no option but to do it on the wires. And you can see now that it's come off nice and easy. Obviously, if you want more room, you can undo this bracket here. We've got a Torx bolt here, here and here. I'm just gonna give you the measurement of that so you know what you might need. And it's a 10 millimeter one, E10. And if you have a look, you can see there that that fits nice. Right, so this is exactly where you wanna be putting your resistor. So you can see that this is the feeder and this is what goes down to the actual motor. So we wanna go between the middle two pins, the 4.7K, that's important, on these middle two pins. But we're just gonna plug in our fancy emulator straight into here. Before we plug in the emulator into here, we are just gonna give all of this a good wipe down, try to get rid of some of the caked in oil, give this all a clean around this gasket. I'm just putting a screwdriver in here just to loosen this one up here. Remember, we're reusing this. You can see it goes all the way around. There's just little ridges on the inside. There you go, okay. So now we can give that a good clean and you can see it's ridged there. And now let's go on to the other gasket. And with this one, I'm just putting the screwdriver in here nice and gently, not breaking anything, and just sliding it out there. We're gonna give all this a clean and in here a clean as well. So now we're gonna be plugging in the magical emulator. So you can see there's a little tab at the bottom here. That's gonna to go towards this locking mechanism. So it, it actually won't go in the wrong way. It stops it there anyway. So we're gonna plug it in there and clip it in and now let's push down this like so and now that is locked into place now if you were just using the resistor obviously you would have to try to waterproof this in some way because oil is still going to be leaking down onto it but this is all nicely sealed so we're just going to try to put this somewhere out of harm's way and that's the problem i'm not quite sure where that's going to go without it getting in the way of the pipe i think probably I think probably there might be the best uh, the best place to put it, just there. Right, now let's get the gaskets back in and get this reassembled. Now if you have a look, we have four knobbly bits around here and we have four holes here, here and to its side. But also have a look at the bottom here, there's a little cutout just here. And that's going to line up with this cutout here. So let's put this here, like so. And line up the knobbly bits here, here and here. And you can see now we've got a bit there a bit here and a bit there. Like a male part there and there's a female there. The male part needs to go into that little cutout just there. So we're just gonna slide that on. There you go. And you can see now that that's nice, uh, nicely in its home. So now we have to put this pipe back in. So we're gonna start with this side here. It's fiddly, but I'm just gonna ease it in there to begin with. There we go. And now that side's in, roughly in position. Now we're gonna go over to the turbo. So we're gonna move this pipe out of the way for the time being. And now we're gonna put this in like so. There you go. And that went in nice. It was a nice sort of confirmation as that went in. Also, when I do up this Jubilee clip, I'm gonna put pressure on this here while doing this up here to make sure it's sitting nicely against the turbo. And then with this one here, it's just gonna slide in to there like so. Remember, it's only rubber, so I'm not going to do it up too tight. I'm just doing it up so there's just a bit of resistance. And again, I'm just nipping it up. It does, you don't need to go crazy on these. Okay, so I'm putting pressure against this now to have it fully in there. And now I'm just going to uh, start nipping this one up. Okay, now with that one, I've just done it slightly tighter than the others because I want that to be as close as possible to the turbo. So that is it. Now, back on. We just need to put the engine cover back on and then need to see whether the car's working again. See on the engine cover, we have a hole here and hole here. They need to marry up with that hole there and that hole there. Do up those two bolts. Okay. 
that's it, a nice, simple, easy job to do. Right, so before taking it for a drive, we are just going to put the keys in the ignition, see if the engine still works, and let's just see what happens with this engine management light. It's gone out. No, it's back on. It's back on, but the other one has now gone out, hasn't it? The flashing red one's gone yes. out. But the engine management's still on. But that just could be because it's obviously got the code already in it. Before it wouldn't rev past 3,000 revs. So let's see now if it goes past 3,000 revs. Yeah, there we go, that went up to 4,000. So it looks like limp mode has definitely gone. Let's clear that code. So on this car here, the OBD reader is just there by the uh, accelerator. Remember, UK car might be different in other countries. So we're gonna plug that in there now. That's it. I'm going to turn the ignition on, but leave the engine off. Right, so that's that, and now we're going to go to enter, and we're going to go to diagnostics. And let's go to erase codes. Erase done, press any key to continue. So now what we're going to do is we're going to unplug this, and now we're going to turn the engine on again and see if the engine management light is now gone. Right, here goes. Yay! And there you go, the engine management light is now out and the other light's out as well. Fantastic. So let's take this for a drive and let's see now if it's got a bit of oomph in it. So we're just driving now and the car definitely has its power back. We're going to head towards a main road where we can put our foot down a bit to get the kick down to work. But if you look now, there's no lights coming up on the dashboard, which is a lovely sight to see. Now I just had a look in my little kit, uh, kit of resistors and I did find a 4700 ohm one. That's the colour code there in case anybody's interested. Now let's find a, an open road to see if this kick down's working. Right, we're going to see if the kick down's working now. Whoa. Yep, that's certainly working. So, what a lovely little workaround, let's call it. At least now the car can get another MOT because in the UK you can't have a, a car with lights on the dash, to, to, it won't go through its MOT. So, hopefully, now this car will keep running for many, many, many years, even though it's not to manufacture a spec anymore, it's still a working car. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe for more videos. Take care. Bye now.